Well, hello everyone. Uh, John and Carol Arnott here. We're happy to be coming and uh, being with all of you at Legacy Gardens of Hope. We are. And uh, this is great. It's, it's great to have such a wide yeah. denominational spread of different uh, groups and stripes and everything of the body of Christ. It Isn't is. Love? It's wonderful. And we've, we have a fantastic revival story. Actually. We do. And we're so thankful to Carol Lord. and I got married way back <laughs> in, in June of 1979, June the 9th, a beautiful day. And everything changed. It did. We went to Indonesia mm. a year later for a month oh. just to visit the mission field there. And uh, we went as business people thinking right. maybe we could give our testimony, maybe raise some money for them mm -hmm. or something like that. And they got it all mixed up, didn't they? Yeah, they thought you were the apostle, the evangelist coming from Canada with a K. It was so cool. Yeah. And John learned, I think, there. Good job. He had lots of Bible teaching in, in, in his heart. But he preached night after night, meeting after meeting. You know, some days we did like four a I day. I know. And it, little house meetings, <laughs> but the one that floored me was a three-day crusade, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, we had all their a, food and kind of diarrhea I in know. the midst of it all. It was like, <laughs> oh God, oh God. But uh, we came home just wrecked on the airplane with that and uh, thinking, God, we, we can't give our lives to business. We have to go for it in the ministry. And I'd yeah. been to Bible school, uh, three years of that. I would loved the word. I'd been immersed in that all my life. I think at that time we were, I was probably about 39 years of age. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, Carol was three years younger. But we were so in awe that God would use us when we went to Indonesia like that. And so our preparation culminated in part to that Indonesian trip. But, you know, I was converted under Billy Graham and uh, impressed under Catherine yeah, Coleman's ministry, as oh, were you. I was. Carol it's got just, a healing, actually, I in did. a Catherine meeting. And yeah. She, Little Lutheran, tell the story quick. Oh, it was incredible. We were on the stage and then my turn came up to share my testimony. And Catherine says, and, and what happened to you? And so I told her and, and she said, and she said, wow, well, what church do you go to? And I said, I go to a Lutheran church. And she said, well, I'm a Lutheran. Yeah. And, then, and then she said, oh, Jesus. And I had been saved probably a month maybe six weeks before I went to that meeting because my neighbor had asked and asked and asked. So I didn't know anything. So she came up and she went like this to you know, pray for me. But I had seen the other people fall down and I thought she pushed them. And so she came up and she put her hands on my face and I said, oh, please don't push me. And she said, oh, honey, I wouldn't push you. And she stepped about six feet back and she said, wonderful Jesus, come and touch this little Lutheran. And I stood there and I thought, hmm, I'm not falling down. And all of a sudden I thought, oh, I'm falling down. And it was just, oh, glorious. Over you went, just <laughs> like just, that. And so this is all preparation that Catherine was. Kuhlman and then Benny Hinn yeah. uh, w w has been a good friend of ours all this time because right. he got his start in Toronto. And then we met John Wimber and loved that whole vineyard worship mm -hmm. and uh, dynamic where everyone can be involved in the ministry. Yeah. And so coupled with my love for the word and uh, a hunger for revival, we came back from Indonesia and uh, we would just, we've got to go for this. We have got to and go so for it. And so the Lord said to me, if you're serious, I want you to go to Carol's hometown, Stratford, Ontario, <laughs> where, in my opinion, there was way too much snow. <laughs> and uh, we started our first church there. We did. And it was in a home and it just grew and grew. And uh, 
Jubilee Church there to this yeah. day is just so, so great. But that was our start. And uh, we went to a meeting of Benny Hinn's in yes. Toronto in the summer of 1992. And it was a powerful time. The, the lame walk, the blind mm -hmm. see, the deaf heard, and about like a, thousand a thousand people, people came to Jesus. They did. And we're like, oh God, oh. this is what we have to have. It's the Holy Spirit. I mean, we believed in it, you know, we saw it, but, but we didn't think that he would move in us. Yeah, and we'd learned some things right. about healing for the heart right. and freedom and Father's love and so on through our, the 80s yeah. of our church experience. But this was different. And yeah. the Lord said to me, if you're serious, I want you to do two things. Give me your mornings. And secondly, spend time with those that are anointed. Now we were living back in Toronto at this point in time. And we did exactly that. And you know, we had uh, a year and a half or more where we fell back in love with Jesus again. It was absolutely fantastic. So we gave our mornings back to God. We did. And John would, uh, we'd play on the auto harp and uh, just worship God. And we'd, we'd just sing and sing and sing. And, and I'm so thankful that the Lord said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, because I wasn't a great, great singer, but oh, we just worshiped, honey, and the presence of the Lord would come down. Yeah, and we read devotionals yeah. and we, we, we prayed on our knees and we prayed scripture, we read scripture. We just had that time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, that is a precursor to revival. That is yes. the very best thing to do. We now would say, buy the oil of the Holy Spirit. And then we heard, John heard about Argentina and how there was a, a massive revival going on. And Ed Savoso had a, a, a team, um, I, I was a tour, I guess. He had a tour going yeah, down to see the Argentina, Argentina revival. revival. Yeah. And he, so John says, Carol, let's go. Well, we didn't have any money. I mean, I think we had $500 in the bank. And our daughter gave us an, a 500 that she couldn't afford either. And we put the rest on our credit card. And we went it's to Argentina. It's amazing how $500 was such a lot of money back then. Well, it was a lot of money back then. Anyway. But we went to Argentina. We did. And it was amazing. We saw a prison and revival. Oh, that was just incredible. Various churches all around Buenos Aires. But mm -hmm. the, the thing that was the showstopper for right. us was when Claudio Friesen prayed for us. Mm -hmm. And this man of God down there, uh, he prayed for all the Westerners. Yeah. And Carol got blasted again. I meant to say earlier that at that Benny Hinn meeting in the summer <laughs> of 92, I That's had to carry her me. home from, you from did. that. I and was she was just electrified. Electrified, buzzing. Uh -huh. <laughs> and All I, night and I long. said to her, baby, don't try and get it together. Just no. stay under this. This is what we want. This is the Holy Spirit. And that's when the Lord said, if you want this, give me your morning. Yes. So it led to Argentina. Mm -hmm. She got absolutely <laughs> hit again. I felt like I fell over politely. Yes, and but what did the Lord say? But the Lord said to me, do you want this? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh yes, I want this. I'm thinking, why do you think I flew thousands of miles, spent thousands of dollars, <laughs> but I want this. Right. Yes, okay, then take it. And it was like, take it. I, I thought you would just passively stand here waiting for heaven to fall. Uh, but I realized that in, yeah. a, in any relationship, it needs to be both parties, mm -hmm. you know, it can't mm -hmm. all just be God. He's right. expecting us to reach out. And, and so I reached yeah. out and took hold of it. Right. And I felt uh, like something shifted that and was I a paradigm I, shift. I mm -hmm. came home with something. You did, and it was a paradigm yeah. shift for you. And of course, so did you. Yeah, I sure did. And to shorten the story, we were with other friends in our denomination, and I found out that Randy mm -hmm. Clark had had a similar touch in a meeting with Rodney mm -hmm. Howard Brown. Yeah. 
So I got hold of Randy and I invited him to come. Yeah. And he, he couldn't come for two whole months, right. but we set it for January 20. Yeah. And uh, my goodness, Carol, oh my he, gosh. he came on January the 20, and it was but, you know, he amazing. Just, he just was really humble, told his story. Everything was just really quiet. And then when he said, if anybody wants me to pray for them, come up to the front. And you remember, and as the people got up to come, it was like heaven fell. People just, uh, some of them, most of them didn't make it up to the front. No. They just, in their chairs, down, laughing, crying, yes. shaking. And it we learned admitted. what it meant for yep. the Holy Spirit to fall on people. Right. He fell on us that day, and that changed everything. Yeah. And it opened us up to seeing Christian people encountering mm. the power and the love of God in a way that would overwhelm them typically. I mean, they were just overwhelmed. They, they couldn't crawl. They, all they could do is laugh or shake or groan or cry or oh, I know. whatever. It, I mean, was, it was amazing. It was amazing. And we saw that all the way through. It was incredible, the, the variety of things that God would do. I remember, I remember this one man from, he was a pastor from Alaska, and he was just, had just super hurts and wounds, like all the way through, and he was ready to give up, and the Holy Spirit came on him. And he was down on the floor, alternately laughing and crying for, I think it was almost two hours. And yeah. Afterwards, we asked him, you know, so, you know, wh what happened in your heart? What was going on? And he just said that the Lord took him back to every time that he'd gotten hurt and healed it. And then he started being filled with the joy of the Lord. And, and this just happened again yeah. and again and again, didn't it? He the, forgave he, he and forgave, he was yep. filled. And was there, awesome. there are so many stories, friends. Oh, I, mean, I we know. We were overwhelmed. I, somewhat frustrated back then because I couldn't take all the testimonies. There I were know, just there was just too lineups. many mm -hmm. super testimonies <laughs> that we couldn't take. Life changing. But anyway, that night, it was a Thursday night, January 20, 1994, yeah. Randy came and boom, the Holy Spirit exploded upon us and we were off. And I remember saying, Randy, you can't go home. <laughs> We'd planned four days. And he stayed and stayed. We called his wife. He stayed some more. We called her back. He stayed two more days. And he, was, he stayed with us for the better part of 40 days, back and forth a, right. a little bit. Yeah. But then Randy is going home, and we're like, oh, you know, what's going to happen? Is the Holy he, Spirit, is the Holy gonna Spirit stay? going with him or what? Oh. But by this time, we'd learned, no, this wonderful fire of God is so transferable mm -hmm. that it's it's on us too and yeah. we realized we really did get something in Argentina we did yeah and Randy really did get something mm -hmm. at, at a Rodney Howard Brown yeah. meeting and there we were and so the whole thing in Toronto yeah. took off and I have a scripture that I wanted to to read about that and it's from Matthew 24 14, where Jesus said this, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. Now, I want you to think about that scripture with me for a minute. This gospel of the kingdom, this, the one he's talking about, with signs, miracles, wonders, will be preached to all the nations around the world. Imagine saying that to a little group. Of I know. A couple of hundred people, however many yeah. were with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they're thinking, well, right. we're just a little sect of Judaism and we're right. going to reach the whole world. And he never said, by the way, it'll take 2,000 years <laughs> no. or something. But you know what? The gospel of the kingdom. And we love singing that. David Ruth's song, let your glory, glory fall in this room. Let it go forth from here to the nations. 
And man, didn't it just. People it were coming from every nation. <laughs> Every nation. Plane loads oh, from England. I know. Bus loads from the U.S. Yeah. And all over Canada. Yeah. And, and, and Argentina. Australia. And Australia. And Brazil. And Germany. And Europe. And, and Korea. Oh, my goodness. They just were coming from everywhere. Yeah. Why? Because they were hungry for the promise of the Father that Jesus reminds us of in Acts chapter one, wait for the promise of the Father. You know, one of the best things that can happen to any of us friends is to wait and then be filled with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That just so puts a living dynamic in our relationship. And so it spread everywhere, it didn't did. it? It did, and you know, the, the, remember from the airport, even the, the uh, customs people would come to the meetings because so many people came and they, they didn't believe them. So they came to check it yeah, out and then they got touched. It was just we, amazing. We were a top tourist attraction in the city of Toronto yeah, for, for two several years. years. Yeah. <laughs> well, it spread nightly meetings, of course. We did nightly meetings for 12 and a half years. Can you believe I know, that? I can. And, uh, our friend in England, Ken Gott, over there yeah. in Sunderland in the north of England, he went three and a half years of nightly meetings. Yeah. Cheon in Pasadena mm -hmm. went, again, three, three and, and a half, half years, years. Yep. nightly meetings. And then Brownsville happened in the U.S. and, uh, and, and places all over. I think that Gerald Coates told me that there, at one time there were 7,000 churches in the UK wow. that were going for nightly meetings. That's incredible. And so that was amazing. Yeah. But the good news is, friends, it's still continuing to this day. Yay! <laughs> and we saw that just the other day we when we were praying for <laughs> the worship team in Toronto. I know. The Holy oh, Spirit so good. still comes. And so it continues. Our movement, Catch the Fire, has like 150 plus churches around the world. And uh, all of our Revival Alliance friendship with mm -hmm. Bill and Betty Johnson and Roland and Heidi Baker, Georgian. Jay and Sue Ann, Georgian and Winnie, Winnie Randy mm -hmm. and Deanne. Did I forget anyone? No, that's it. Um, they all now have their own uh, networks and movements that are uh, an outflow of all of this wonderful outpouring and it's spreading and spreading and spreading. And you know what, friends? The best is yet to come. I want that to sink in. Mm -hmm. The gospel of the kingdom, this gospel, shall be preached and demonstrated all over the world. And it's, it's prophesied. Mm -hmm. uh, that he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. That's what yeah. Joel prophesied, and Peter quoted it in Acts 2. He did. This thing is going global. Did you know that Jesus is planning on taking over the entire world? And by the way, he's returning very soon. I'm convinced of it, yeah, Carol. I know, me and too. And it's a highlight. It but is. But anyway, uh, because that's true, I want to just tell a quick story about a prophetic word that we got from David Roos. Yes. We had a couple of conferences, uh, but this was our first big conference in Toronto since the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. fell. And we called it Catch the Fire. Why? Because this fiery, Ciao. burning love of the mm. Holy Spirit was Weird. getting on everyone, and it was so contagious. I know. Wasn't it? it <laughs> ew, ew. <laughs> and, it and, was. And we loved it, it. We loved the transformation that happened in the lives of people. I know. And at that, that conference, it was in October of 94, and so we'd been going for about nine months, months I think. Right. And here we have a packed hotel, about 4,000 people there. And we're, Randy and I looking at each other and, and it was so powerful, friends. Yeah. And I remember saying, Randy, where is this going? Because we're starting to get really scared. Like, I know, because it was really powerful. And he looked back, he said, John, I don't know. 
And, and we didn't know. It just kept getting more and more powerful. The ballroom looked like a battlefield <laughs> with everybody. And so did the out. hallways. The waiters and oh. waitresses, hotel staff were afraid of us, don't touch me kind of thing. Oh. And, and, and in the midst of it, David Roos, who was leading worship yeah. at that conference, prophesied this amazing word. And you can find it if you go and look for uh, David Roos, Catch the Fire, 1994, prophetic word on YouTube. You'll find that yeah. word. And it went something like this. If you think this is it, this is not it. You have seen nothing yet. This is nothing compared to with what's coming. I'm just growing up a plant and my wind will blow that seed to the ends of the earth. Yeah. And that seed will germinate and become the mightiest revival that this world has ever yeah. seen. It was an incredible word. And friends, that is pending. Mm -hmm. That is where this is all going. Our Christian faith, it's not a, a failed experiment, to use that term. It's not something that worked so-so, yeah. worked for a while, but now it's kind of waning. No, no, no. It's right on track with what God is wanting it to be. The uh, knowledge of the Lord is going to fill all the earth. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That's where this is going. And ooh, I can't wait, Carol. Come on, baby. The ah, best has yet to come. I know. And ah. those seeds have been germinating and growing in this in this season, God has been calling us into such an intimate relationship, getting us ready for that seed to be just harvested. Yeah. So it's really amazing it that we've is had amazing. a time yeah. that we can really press in to his heart. Well, I want to encourage all of you to say, Lord, I want to get ready for what you're doing and what you're about to do. And I feel like the revival that we've been enjoying since 1994 is never going to end. It's mm -hmm. just gonna go from glory to glory to glory. It grows and consolidates, grows more, consolidates. So many new ministries, so many young people mm -hmm. are, are getting all on fire and we are seeing the earth filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. We are. And I just can't wait to see the next move of the Holy Spirit. Right. Because and he's moving. Here we are in the midst of this COVID epidemic now. Mm -hmm. And it feels like it's just slammed the brakes on a whole lot of things. Mm. But you know, something that is very wow. redemptive for Carol and I was, we found that we were too busy the we other were. way. We were, yeah, and, we were too busy. Uh, we wouldn't have said that maybe, but no. we were because now. We've got our mornings back. Yeah. Yay. Yay. And he's coming so preciously. Oh. oh. And it's just wonderful. So if you're kind of discouraged about the lockdowns, discouraged about times, I just encourage you to spend time. Sell. He told me one time, he said, Carol, sell me the most valuable thing that you own. And I said, Lord, what are you talking about? Lord, my house? Well, John owns half of it. I have to ask him if we can sell our house. Yeah, and then my so. horse, that's the only other thing that I've got that's probably worth anything else. Well, it's not much worth horse. much now. Not but anyway. now, but back then when the Lord told me this, he was. And I said, Lord, my horse? And the Lord said, no, the most valuable thing that you own. And I said, Lord, I don't know what you're saying. And he said, Carol, the most valuable thing that you own is your time. Sell me your time and buy the pearl of great price. And that is what he's asking us. And we've been getting back into that this whole year. I know. And it's still not lifting in Canada. We're locked down. Closed down tight again. Yeah. There's spiking COVID cases, but you know what? God is using it, friends, yes. to get people back into prayer, back into time with him, 
back into seeking his face. Yeah. Because he's getting ready for a mighty big push. And I'm telling you, uh, it's going to be very, very exciting. It is going to be very uh, and, exciting. And I Don't think miss it. what we're up for is the greatest revival and ingathering of souls the world has ever seen. And then, soon after, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to establish his kingdom on earth and take all of us unto himself. Woo! It is absolutely a very, very precious time. Mm -hmm. So hold your hands out with us. And Thank you, uh, Lord. just take a moment to welcome the Holy Spirit. Oh, we Holy Spirit. You. We're sorry we tend to get too busy mm. for the most important thing, taking time with you. Yes, Lord. And I feel that heavy presence mm. right now resting on us. Oh, Lord, I ask you to come and just rest mm. on all these dear ones yes, that Lord. are watching this mm. um, video, this presentation right now. Increase your glory. Yes, Lord. Let Lord. your glory fall in this room and then let it go from here to the nations. Oh. Let your fragrance rest in this place yes, Lord. as we gather to seek your, your face. face. Thank oh, you, Lord. Lord, let your kingdom come. Oh, Lord, God. let your will be done on mm. earth just as it is in heaven. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus, our wonderful Savior. <sighs> Catch the fire, friends. Don't miss it. Let that fire burn on you. Wow. Mm. More, Lord. Lord, Just we were born them. for this. We were born for revival. Let the earth be filled. Yes, Lord. Is the cry of our heart. Let the churches catch fire. Yes, Lord. Oh, we just watched a story about the Welsh revival mm -hmm. the other day. It was so amazing how it spread from community to community to community. Send your fire again, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost and fire come yeah. and immerse us and baptize us in the Father's amazing blessing. Mm. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.